This is an example problem where we're going to be examining a composite shape to add up all the small little parts to form a total moment of inertia of an area. So let's get started here. Um, so we have this shape that kind of uh, looks like a zigzag here. And with that, we're going to break this up into shapes. So I have broken this up. We have shape number one here in the middle. We have shape number two at the bottom and shape number three at the top. Okay, so for let's do the x-axis first. And if we look up on the table for the x-axis for a rectangle, we come up with the moment of inertia about a cent its centroidal axis is 1 12th bh cubed, okay? So uh, here we'll have, in, for shape number one, we'll have 1 half. Uh, the base is 600 times 100 cubed. So we have 1 12th times 600 times 100 cubed. And that turns out to be, uh, I'm going to put this in times 10 to the 6th. So the numbers are going to get really big here. But this unit is millimeters to the 4th. So that comes out to 50, 50 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. So um, I'm just going to put the the 10 to the 6, the mega up here. Um, okay, so now for IY, we have, remember for the centroid of a rectangle, uh, or a moment of inertia about the centroidal axis in the Y direction is 1 12th height times base cubed. So we have 1 12th divided by 12 times the base, or the height, which is 100 times the base cubed, which is 600 cubed. And that comes out to be, okay, 1,800 times 10 to the sixth, okay? The area of this rectangle is 100 times 600. And let's put that in, 10 to the sixth as well here. And the area is 0 0.06 here. Okay, dx comes out, uh, dx is zero because the centroid is right along the x or uh, the axis there. And the same thing for dy. And so therefore we have ix and iy for this shape just to be their own 50 and 1800 times 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth. Okay, moving on to shape two, which is this bottom shape down here. Okay, so the centroid of the shape is right in the middle there, all right? So again, we have, we, for our ix about the centroid, we have 1 12th bh cubed, 1 12th, and the base here is 100, and the height here is, looks like 300, that's 400 minus 100. So that's 300 cubed. And that turns out to be 225 times 10 to the sixth. And then likewise, let's do IY, which was one half height times base cubed. One half or 1 12th times the base, or times the height, which is 300, times the base cubed. And that comes out to be 25. 25 times 10 to the sixth. The area is 300 times 100. And that turns out to be 0 0.03 times 10 to the sixth. And dx is the distance from this point to the centroid. So it, that's 300 all the way to the edge, but it's actually 250 to the centroid. So this distance here is 250. So that's 250 millimeters. And dy then is the distance from here to here which turns out to be 
150 plus another 50, I believe that's 200. And now we use our formulas here for the parallel axis theorem to figure out Ix and Iy of shape number two. Okay, so through performing those calculations using Ix hat plus Ady squared, um, that comes out to be, I believe, 1425, 1425 times 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth. And in the y direction then, we have uh, 1900 times 10 to the neg or 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth as well. All right, so for the last one, we have shape number three here, and shape number three looks very similar to shape number two. So it has the same base and same height. So these are going to be the same. The, the the moment of inertia about the centroid of that shape, which is right about here, right, is going to be the same. So that as shape number two, so we have 225 and then 25 here. The area, right, we have 300 times 100, that should be the same, which is 0 0.03 times 10 to the six um, millimeters squared. And dx, that's the distance from the centroid to the centroid of that shape. So it is this, this distance here. And that distance then turns out to be a, a negative 250. And I guess here we forgot the negative sign on the dy here, but it doesn't matter, right? If we get the negative and positive signs, it's squared here. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. So in the dy, we have a positive here, which is 200. So these look, these two look very similar. So we're gonna have the same answers when we come out for those shapes. The last step for solving for the moment of inertia about these axes are just to add up all these here. So our ix comes out to be uh, 2,900 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. And our IY comes out to be 5,600 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. So let's write those again. And to get our units correct, let's do 2.9 times 10 to the ninth millimeters to the fourth and that is for our moment of inertia about the x-axis and then last we have the moment of inertia about the y-axis which turns out to be 5.6 times 10 to the ninth millimeters to the fourth so those are the solutions for this composite shape and this is much easier than trying to integrate this entire shape here